right, <clears throat> we moved on to the second set of slides. So we're really flying now. This has only been about five, six hours on this. But on these, what we're going to talk about is really nothing more than how to use a financial calculator. Um, I, I tell students when I teach business finance, which is the first finance class in undergrad, <clears throat> excuse me, and sometimes the only finance class a lot of our undergrad students take, that basically business finance is nothing more than how to use your financial calculator. We do a little bit more than that um, in business finance, but really not much more. So what we're going to talk about are the different things involved in doing time value of money problems. And the way you know that you have a financial calculator or the different variables found in a time value of money problem is the, are these five, PV, FV, N, PMT, and I. Sometimes the I is I and a percentage sign. Um, sometimes it's N slash Y. But those are basically the five, and they're usually all on the same row on your calculator. Um, so we're going to talk about each one of these and what they really mean. <clears throat> Excuse me again. PV is present value. It's actually the, the variable is the amount of money today or in today's terms. Um, we're going to call it different things throughout the semester. Sometimes it's called price. Sometimes it's called market value. Sometimes it's called market price. But all of these involve the value today, this instant. So if Bob has the ability to pay $10 today, that $10 is the present value, the amount to be paid today. If that's what the price of it is, is $10, that's the present value. Next is future value. Future value is the amount of money you're going to receive in one lump sum at some point in the future. So it's a one lump sum payment. I've got lump sum in all caps because we're going to talk about another set of future payments, but it's not a lump sum. This is a one-time lump sum amount of money. So in the example we just had, the $12 that Bob will get in, in two years, that's $12 he's going to get one time at one point in the future. So that's the future value. Future value really doesn't have a lot of other terms or names we go by. Um, N is the number of payments. This variable is really the number of compounding periods. Um, so a compounding period is it occurs when investments are in compound interest. Um, so if I invest $10 in an investment, it'll pay me 10% per year. After one year, I have $11. After two years, I have $12.10 because not only do I get another dollar of interest on that $10 initial investment, I also get interest on top of that interest. So our compounding period would be two, um, and it goes on and on from there. Um, so really compounding interest allows us to earn more money because we're really earning interest on top of interest. Uh, PMT is payment, and really what this is, it's the amount of each periodic cash flow. Remember I said future value is that one-time lump sum? Well, periodic cash flow means you get a series of payments in the future. So at the end of one year, you get three bucks. At the end of two years, you get three bucks. Three years, three bucks. Something like that. It's a periodic set of cash flow payments. Um, and most of the time, the periodic cash flow payments will be the same each period. Uh, you know, if you look back at that quiz we did, um, you know, the $106 received in years one through five for option C would be payment. Um, and the MBA class will actually change this up. We'll have different periodic payments, and we'll have to figure out how to work those. But that's really what we're looking at is a series of periodic payment, periodic receipts of funds. Um, I is the interest rate, and interest rate has a lot of different names. Sometimes we'll call it the market rate of interest. Sometimes we'll call it market rate. We'll call it yield. Uh, yield, current yield, market yield, and yield to maturity, and yield to call. So the five that have yield in the title, that's usually when we're talking about bonds or other type of debt instruments where the company or somebody has borrowed money. Market rate of interest, market rate, and required rate can be stocks or bonds. Usually required rate is just done for stocks, and market rate or market rate of interest can be either way. Um, so this is the, the cost or the benefit of investing. So, you know, the 10%, if you're earning a 10% interest rate, that's the, that's the I. Um, so for a very simple example, 
Bob has been offered an investor that pays him a dollar fifty per year for five years, and then at the end of that five years, he gets ten bucks. Um, if he requires ten percent on his investments, what is the value of this investment for Bob? In other words, what's the most that Bob would pay today to be able to receive a dollar fifty per year for five years, and then ten dollars at the end of that five-year period? So plugging it into our financial calculator. Our number of periods is five because we're going to receive five periodic payments. The interest rate or the market rate of interest is 10%. We're actually going to get $10 at some point in the future, the lump sum in the future. It's actually be five years in the future. And then each year we're going to get $1.50. We then solve for PV. We compute PV. We find PV. And we find that it tells us that this is basically worth $11.90. You'll notice there's a negative. The reason why it's a negative is because to buy that investment, you have to spend $11.90. That's money leaving your wallet, leaving your account. You have to keep track of negatives and positives or you're going to get an error message on your calculator. Um, so if somebody's, if they came up to Bob and said, hey, you can get this investment, it only cost you 12 bucks," would you do it? The answer is no. Because to Bob, it's only worth $11.90. He would never pay $12 for something worth $11.90. That's a bad investment. Um, you've got some time value of money problems that have been posted on Blackboard. I'm also going to talk about how to do this in Excel um, and not without a financial calculator. You'll find that in our class, we actually do a lot more with Excel because we're going to have more complex problems. So that's really what we're going to be looking at is with Excel. But you need to know the basics of with the financial calculator or with whatever so you understand what goes where and what the terms are.